The amount of Native American ruins and sites in the southwest is pretty amazing. In many cases, they may be hiding right under your nose. Zion is no different, but most people are too busy rushing to Angel's Landing to see them. Like I said, there's actually multiple native sites in the park. There's more to Zion than just pretty rocks. Okay, let's take a quick break to discuss identifying places in social media. I've been both praised and demonized for showing people exactly where some of these amazing places are in the US, and for the most part I'm fine with it. There is less of an increase of crowds and more of a problem of people only visiting a few Instagram worthy sites, and I just want to shift people away from those places being overloaded and back to the abandoned places that haven't seen tourists since the 90s. But Native American sites are the exception. If the site is super popular and well known like Horseshoe Canyon then it's fine. Google Maps has already given you turn by turn directions. But many sites are off the radar and I think it's good to keep them that way. It's not hard to find them. Two of the sites here are actually visible from the park shuttle. I found all this from the internet, old park brochures, and the park rangers. If you're super dedicated to finding these, then feel free to do the searching yourself. It's fun to do some sleuthing and find something that's hidden in plain sight. When visiting a native site, try to be a ghost. Don't touch, disturb, move, or dig anything. Fingers can leave oils that damage the images. Feet can trample artifacts just under the top layer of dirt. Rock and mortar structures may be thousands of years old. It would be a shame for them to survive thousands of years only to be destroyed by somebody who thought it would be okay to lean on them. Some sites may not fully be cataloged by archaeologists yet. And if all that doesn't bother you, at least be respectful of the people who made the sites. They're still sacred sites to their descendants today. Now, the Antiquities Act does allow the public to view sites on public land, but that privilege can easily be taken away if the public is causing impact. So admire, but don't touch. Visit, but don't trample. Take pictures, not souvenirs. Leave the place with no trace or mark that you had ever visited it. And these aren't just requests, they're backed by law. The fines for damaging sites are steep, and there are rewards for people that turn you in. Zion sits at the edge of the ranges of the Archaic, Fremont, Ancestral Puebloan, and Southern Paiute native cultures. So the park's collection of native archaeology is a very mixed bag. Some things like the main canyon granary are surprisingly old. Carbon dating of grass in the mortar shows that it was constructed between 600 and 880 AD, repaired several times between 1000 and 12000 AD, before being reconstructed by the Boy Scouts in 1929. It was unknown how much reconstruction they did, but the carbon dating shows it was only the top portion. Some side canyons have petroglyphs. Petroglyphs are the images pecked into the rock, removing the darker patina and leaving the lighter colored rock beneath. Pictographs are images that are painted onto rocks. This petroglyph panel contains multiple humanoid figures, circles, and squiggly wavy lines that in some locations have been interpreted as a method of counting days or moon cycles, and in other areas of course depicting rivers. Modern Paiute elders suggested that this area may signify trails through the canyons of the area. Considering the maze of small canyons that make up Zion, a map depicting you are here in relation to the maze would have been very useful to the people moving through. Another easy to access petroglyph site is thought to double as a solar marker. On the summer solstice, a shadow is cast on the spiral resembling the open mouth of a coyote. The petroglyphs are reportedly from the ancestral Puebloan people over a thousand years ago. A more recent addition are the pictographs in a cave within the park. It's believed to be an ancestral Paiute location where ceremonies were held. Referred to as the birthing cave, it's believed this is where women would go with their newborn children for a few days until they were able to rejoin their families in the tribe. Hence the sooted walls where fires had been made for warmth. The cave was probably just ceremonial and the natives lived outside, growing crops in the valley and hunting wildlife that came to drink at the nearby spring. It's pretty unique among pictographs in that there are so many different colors on the walls. Remember that ancestral natives couldn't just order a paint set off the Sears catalog. These colors were created from the rocks, plants, and animals of the land they lived on. 
Unfortunately, pigments can fade or shift over time, and the figures may get harder to recognize as a result. Luckily, modern technology has a solution, and was one of the main reasons I brought a digital camera and a tripod to get good, high-detailed images of the walls. A program called D-Stretch has been created that manipulates the colors of a digital image to emphasize colors that may have faded, or to isolate specific colors to more easily recognize the images. The colors may not be true to the original, but we can get a better idea of what the images looked like when they were first painted. The yellow figure at the top of this is very prominent, but when we stretch it we can see the faint coloration that made up his head. We thought this was a spiral at the bottom, but it's a well-defined series of concentric circles. There was a pale white figure with one hand up and one hand down, but stretched we can see the additional color detail, two eyes and a possible headdress, plus the top half of a similarly posed yellow figure next to him. We thought the dotted image to the right of the blue-green man looked like a depiction of the American flag, but stretched it turns out to be the headdress of a complex painted figure with earrings and a similar figure on the left of the blue-green man. The two humanoids at the top center are pretty apparent, but pay attention to the blank spot to the right. Hard to tell exactly what was painted here, but it was much more complex than many of the figures seen. The large white figure to the right we estimated at about two forearms in length, but stretched we see that his pants and feet were a different colors, and there are two people playing flutes in his ear. Speaking of instruments, the figure at the bottom left looks like he has a bassoon sellotape to the side of his head. I thought it was an unfortunate overlap of a later painting. But when we stretch it, we can see that the black figure behind him has a similar shape attached to his ear. And in the back under layers of the fire soot was another humanoid, which when stretched looks just like Finn from The Adventures of Finn and Jake. I'm not sure if he's hunting or just corralling the animals around him. Remember to treat the parks with respect, and double that respect when around native sites. You're just one person, but imagine a million people following you doing the exact same thing that you did. We all create impact no matter how hard we try not to or how good we are at cleaning up after ourselves. Even our footprints can create damaging impact. So stick to established trails, solid slick rock, or wash bottoms if you're in the backcountry. Never enter native archeological structures, just make an effort to minimize your impact when you're passing through. Be a ghost, be a ninja. If you're heading through Zion, keep your eyes peeled. Like I said, some of this is visible from the park shuttle, although you'll be hard pressed to see it as the shuttle speeds by. Think of it as a reason to take the slow path through the park. Go slow, stare at the cliff faces and rocks. Maybe you'll get lucky and see these, otherwise you'll get lucky and see the park. It's all great. One of my biggest recommendations is to just stop and stare at the canyon walls in Zion. Some of the best beauty is the little details that most people miss while rushing through.